Good morning and welcome to this sermon this morning. Um, I hope you had a wonderful week and I hope you can find some time this morning just to relax and, and focus on the word of the Lord. Before we start, let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for the privilege to sit at your feet, to listen once again to, to your message and the words that you want, want us to hear. We we're going to read out of the scripture today. We know it's a privilege, Lord. Please bless the word and, and help us to, to stay focused on you, to go out and to be the difference. I pray it in your name. Amen. With that, I'm welcoming you this morning in the name of the Lord. We're going to listen to some praise and worship music this morning um, and you're welcome just to sit and relax and, and sing along. Your perfect grace has brought me to this place because of you. I freely live my life to you, oh God. I give so I stand before you now. I lift my voice because you set me free. So
This morning I want to start with a few questions. Um, the first one I want to ask you is, I want you to think of your last visit to the supermarket. In which queue did you go? Now I know that it was Black Friday and I know tomorrow is Cyber Monday and I know that we are used to online shopping these days but we still need to go into the supermarket. So the question, which queue did you go in the supermarket? Maybe you're not a supermarket type of person. Then I'm going to ask you the next one. Think about your week, the one that just passed. Think about your mornings between 5 and 7. Here's another question. I want you to think about your last trip down to the coast on vacation. When you go through the toll gate, which lane did you take? And lastly, Another question, think about your internet provider and your fight with them. If your answer is in short, um, the quickest route or because it was too slow, then today's message is for you. In the past few weeks, past few months, my wife and I uh, took some stock and focused on, on the pace that we go around on a daily basis. We took a look at how many things we pack in a morning or a day. We looked at our daily schedules and weekends and we tried where we, we would try to, to, to fit in everything. When we sit back and, and look at all these chaos in our life, uh, we, we realized why we are constantly tired and why we always feel that we are late. Because if we look at our schedules, we realize that it, it is jam-packed. We are always in a hurry. When we go into a supermarket, we choose the quickest lane to, to exit the, uh, the fastest possible way. We choose the, the quickest internet so that we can, can do as much as possible on a daily basis when it comes to work. We, we, we are always, always in a hurry. I believe that life became so rushed and full that we start to feel guilty if we are not busy. I realized this when, when my, my aunt once asked me, uh, Peter, how's it going? And, and I told her, wow, I'm, I'm so busy. And, and I think I'm, I'm starting to get addicted to this whole rushed vibe. And then it suddenly struck me. Think about those people in your life. The people that you ask, how are you doing? And, and the response always, oh, I'm, I'm so busy. Almost like it's a compliment. Almost like, like it's a... It's a good thing to be busy. I do want to disclose something here just in the beginning of today's message is that I know that in certain seasons of our lives, uh, things are busy. If you think about your work, sometimes you do not have control of the meetings and, and the people you need to see and, and the things you need to do. But that's only 50% of, of the things that you do. I'm talking about the other 50%, the one that, that you've got a choice and the one that you choose to fill up and, and fill with things that, that, that steals your energy, that fill your day. I know things are busy. We've got a 14-month-old baby. In, in our current season in our life, things are chaotic. And when I think about it, I realize but, but this is exactly the things that we want to be busy with. In our lives, there are, there are things that is important. There's things that, that, that needs our time, our focus, our energy. But there will always be that stuff that we, that we let in our lives that, that, that zaps our, our energy, that, that creeps into our life and, and steals the time. I want to ask another question. I want you to think about Jesus. I want you to describe him. Maybe you can describe him in the following words as our king or our savior, our lord, our shepherd. Dallas Willard was asked this question once and in his relaxed way he answered, Jesus washes feet. Jesus was relaxed and Jesus had time. When we look at the Gospels, we read of uh, Jesus that, that had time, that was relaxed, 
that had patience. He had time to visit children and stop and eat with strangers. He was a Jesus that was focused, that wasn't rushed. And if you think about it, Jesus had a pretty big and legit reason to be in a hurry. He was the Savior. He had a lot of people he had to teach and, 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 and educate. And to make it worse, he only had three years to do it. And if you think about the funny thing, he didn't have a fast car or fast internet or a cell phone or social media or YouTube to teach these millions. He only had the time and the road. And still, he was relaxed and he went out to do his job. He had time. To stand still. I want to read a scripture out of out of Matthew, um, Matthew nine verse verse nineteen, verse eighteen nineteen, where where we learn of this of this Jesus, where we learn of the Jesus that had time, and and the heading of of, of the scripture is Jesus raises a dead girl and heals a sick woman. Already there you. You can realize or you can you can read that, that that Jesus had time to do stuff, even though he wasn't in a rush. Um, while he was saying this, a, um, a synagogue leader came and um, kneeled before him and said, uh, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and went with him and so did the disciples. Let's pause there. When we are in a rush and we've got a lot of things to do and people come up to us and say, please, um, I need your time. This is urgent. Um, most of the time we will tell them, no, I'm too busy. I don't have time. And Jesus got up and he went with him. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched his, the edge of his cloak. He said, she said to herself, if only I can touch his cloak, I will be healed. And Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman has healed at that moment. He wasn't angry because she stole some of his time um, and wasted his time. He turned around and he spoke to her. After the crowd has been um, outside, he went in and took a look at the girl. Um, and he took the girl by the hand and she got up. The news of the spread out of the region and then the next part um, in verse 27 Jesus heals the blind man and the mute once again Jesus went on from there to bl two blind men followed him calling out have mercy on our son of David and when he had gone indoors the blind man came to him and he asked him do you believe that I am able to do this Jesus asked him this yes Lord they replied then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, see that no one knows of this. But then went out and spread the news about him all over the region. These guys came up to Jesus, asked of, their, of his time, asked of his skills. And Jesus, Jesus made time for them. I want to... I want to go back to the first questions that I've asked in the beginning. Think about, think about your daily life. Think about the things that you do on a daily basis. Think about the first thing that you do when you, when you open your eyes in the morning. Usually we grab our phones. We want to see what is going on in this world. We, we look at the weather. We look at the traffic. We look at and what will, will steal our time because we've got a lot of things to do. It makes us stressed. It is covering us and we forget about the things that is so important. When last did you just sit or lay down? When last did you sit and spend time with Jesus? We are all believers and we all try to 
to be good followers of Christ and, and spend time with Him and, and pray. But, but usually those prayers are on the go. Usually those prayers are the, are, are the prayers that we pray in the traffic so that the traffic will open and we, we will be on time for our meeting. Or, or those prayers will be for, 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 for uh, um, uh, the weather to, to play um, along because we've got a lot of things to do and we wash, need to wash the, the washing and, and it needs to be finished before we leave for work. Everything is in a rush. When last did you just sit? Sit and spend time with the Lord. If we, if we take Jesus and we, we, we look at His life, He made time. When things got busy, when, when, when things are rushed, when, when there's no time, He pulled away from the group, went into solitude, and prayed to God. Usually at this point of the sermon, I've, I will have three points that, that we can use to, to, to put this whole sermon in context and, and to take it into this week. Um, points to remember. But this morning, I, I've only got one point. One big one. One challenge I want to to give you I want to I want to call it a Jesus challenge a challenge where I want you to find somewhere in this week an hour an hour of solitude yeah but Peter I don't have time it's end of the year it's before we close for Christmas there's a lot of things to do it's month end I know but that's exactly why I'm putting this challenge out and I'm putting this challenge for myself as well to find that Jesus moment find solitude and focus and instead of hurrying into things instead of making decisions on the fly find peace and quiet spend time with the Lord and then just maybe maybe we'll make better decisions Maybe we will find peace in the decisions that we make. Maybe we will be able to see all the beauty around us. Stop being scared and anxious. Let us close our eyes. Dear Lord, we know from the scripture there is written that in the wind and in the earthquake and in the husbuzz we miss you but it's in the silence in the solitude it is in a place where we've got a little bit of peace of mind that we will find you and this morning's message is to remind us to stop, remind us to, to focus, remind us to spend time on the things that is important, to make sure that we, we do not just fill our basket because, because that's the right thing to do, but to take out and declutter the things that steal our time, that, that zaps our energy, that that take us, takes us away from you. Dear Lord, my prayer is that everyone that is listening to this message, message this morning will find that peace. Will find that hour this week of solitude, of prayer, the time with you. I know it's the end of the year and it's, it, there's a lot of things that, that needs to be finished uh, before we go on to uh, holiday. Even then, let us be quiet and still, because we know that you are there. Amen. My prayer is that you will find that peace this week. And when I send you out, I send you out in His name. The Father that loved you so much that He sent His Son. 
His son that came to earth, that spent time with us, that, that stood still for a moment in time to tell us and learn us and even die for us. I send you out in the name of the Holy Spirit that, that is between us, that's living through us. And let the people out there see him in our lives. Amen.